All right, hi guys, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we're the Sorry Girls. And obviously today we're bringing to you DIY onesies. I'm so excited. This is like the staple of winter clothing accessory comfiness. Yes. Yes, and we both have never had one. No. Like a lot of people just own onesies. They have like onesie options and we just never had onesies. I don't know why, maybe I just, I don't, I don't know. I'm just drawn to make my own, I guess, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> so don't worry if you're an amateur sewer and you're a little bit scared to try this project. It's actually extremely easy. It's a lot of steps, but they're all really simple steps. So as long as you follow along with the video, it's totally easy to do. Yes, and when you're done, it's gonna make such a great Christmas gift, or you can definitely keep it yourself, or buy like twist and <laughs> fabric and then make twinsy ones. All right, so here we go. For a onesie, you'll need to purchase three meters of flannel or fleece fabric. Next, we put on our favorite fitting hoodie and track pants. You can use any clothing that has the loose fit that you'll want your onesie to have. Next, we're just marking out where our hoodie stops overlapping on our pants, and we added a pin on the front and the back just to mark this. Lay out your fabric with your good sides facing together. Next, we laid out our sweatshirt and sweatpants onto the fabric. We started with the front side of the clothing and folded it in half. Ignore the hood if you have one because we will be doing a crew cut neckline. For the pants, make sure that you overlap the pants and the sweatshirt just as much as you did when you were wearing them. So we have our hoodie overlapping our pants up to the pin and make sure everything is folded nicely and that the crotch piece is defined. <laughs> so defined. <laughs> Start tracing out your clothing pieces. When you get to the neck, like we said, ignore the hood and connect the shoulders to the front piece. When you get to the arm pieces, same thing, ignore the sleeves and draw your line where the seam of the sleeve ends. When you get to the hips, make sure that you account for any stretch that may occur when you're wearing your pants. So we added a couple inches to account for that. Down to the legs, we made our legs a little wider just so that they were more comfortable. And since our fabric doesn't have much stretch as the sweatpants, we wanted to make sure that we'd be able to get them on and over our feet. We also added length to the legs so that we could make sure that they weren't too short and that we had enough for a cuff at the bottom. Once everything is traced out, you can go ahead and cut it out. Make sure to leave a seam allowance if you didn't already when you were tracing it out. Remember that you can always take it in, so we usually give ourselves a little extra seam allowance just in case, because nobody wants a tight onesie. Repeat the tracing out process with the back side of your hoodie and pants. Make sure that the fold of your sweater and the fold of your pants are on the same side. Trace that out applying all the same rules with the neckline, arms, extra hip stretch, straight legs, and extra length on the legs. And when you're done, you can cut that out. Next, we cut out our sleeves. Unfortunately, we were a little tight for seam allowance because of our lack of fabric, and we should have had the top line on a fold so that we didn't have to sew a line here. So depending on how big your onesie is going to be compared to ours, you might want to purchase three and a half meters of fabric. And once you've traced your sleeve out, make sure you do that a second time so that you have two complete sleeves. Next, we are bringing back in our back pieces. We're going to pin and sew the entire back seam up until the crotch. When it's sewn, it will look like this. For the front piece, we're going to take the zipper that we're going to use and mark in where it will go. We put a pin where the zipper will end, and this is where we will sew a seam from the bottom of the zipper to the crotch. When it's all done, it'll look like this, and this part is still pinned while from here down is sewn. Now we're going to take our back side and lay down our front side with the good sides together. At this point, we're going to sew the shoulders together. Go ahead and pin the front and back of the shoulders together, and then take it to the sewing machine. When that's done, it will look like this. Our front and back pieces are attached at the shoulders. Next, we're heading back to our sleeves. And like we said, try to cut out your sleeves on a fold, but if you can't like us, we had to sew a seam at the top so that our sleeves were just one piece each. On our body piece, we're going to open it up with the good sides down. Next, we're going to attach our sleeves starting at the top middle of our sleeve and the top seam of our body piece. Pin the sleeve into the arm socket of the body piece. Go ahead and repeat that on the other side so that you have your sleeves pinned in. Next, take this to the sewing machine. Now we're going to pin up all of our sides together. We are going to pin down the inside of the sleeve all the way down to the leg and the same goes for the other side. While we're at it, we're also going to pin the insides of the legs together and all the way up and around the crotch. And take this to the sewing machine. All right, when that is all done, we're going to hem the neckline. Fold over the neckline, pin, and take it to your sewing machine. 
When that's all done, you can turn it inside out. Now we're going to add our zipper. Ours is 16 inches long. You're going to fold under the fabric and pin it down the sides of the zipper. This will create a clean edge. And make sure to fold any extra at the top of the zipper as well. Repeat on both sides and then you can take it to the sewing machine. Now it's time to put on your onesie and see how it's fitting. You have the choice of either rolling up and cuffing your sleeves if you want to be all done with your onesie right now, or you can fold it to a good length and hem it, which is what we are going to do. Same goes for the pant legs as well. Either roll it up a couple of times for an easy cuff, or pin and sew for a more finished looking cuff. Remember it's always best to pin when your garment is on inside out. Oops. Pin in a circle all the way around both arm cuffs and sew it up. For the legs, we're adding in some elastic, but you can leave them baggy if you want by repeating the arm cuffing process. To add an elastic, we're using 3 quarter inch elastic. Estimate how much space you need to leave for the elastic to fit in nicely inside a tube and pin all the way around. Sew this up, but make sure to leave a gap wide enough to feed the elastic through after. We put a safety pin on the end of our elastic to feed it through the tube we just sewed. And pin the two ends of your elastic together and sew a line to attach them. Sew up the gap we left and you are all done. Alright, so hopefully you guys found that pretty straightforward and you weren't too confused. If you are a little bit nervous to take on this project, just remember that you're never going to get better at sewing if you don't like take it to the next level. And we said this. a t-shirt. <laughs> and if you, if, we said this before that we are definitely not expert sewers no. by any means, but they work. They work and they were not hard to do at all and not scary. It's totally doable, so. Yeah, and once we did this one, it took us like two seconds to do this one. Oh, I know, because figuring it out was half the process, but we've done like all that work for you. So now you know exactly how to do it. It should be super easy, super easy. So let us know if you guys are gonna make any, what patterns you want. Yeah, can we talk about these patterns? Like we spent, somebody saw us in the fabric store <laughs> when we were shopping and we were just having a problem. Yes, it took us way too long to figure out which patterns we wanted because, I mean, I love this one, but I was like, is it too much? And I was like, no, no such thing. No <laughs> such thing. It's so Canadian, it Feral Isles. so, so funny. <laughs> and mine just plaid. I was like, I want to be neutral. Yeah, that's good for all year. For yeah. This is like, oh my God, it's Christmas and it's Canada. It's Canadian Christmas. It's <laughs> Canadian Christmas. Yeah. So we did say that this was a good gift idea, but if you aren't loving this or you know that you don't really have anyone that wants a onesie. Mm -hmm. We have so many DIYs on our channel, first of all. Second of all, we have, oh, you were saying lots. I was saying so many. I thought you were saying no, and I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. um, second of all, we have a gift guide, a DIY slash buy gift guide coming mm -hmm. out, so things you can DIY or buy. Mm -hmm. And last minute gift ideas too coming out. Which are extremely easy and extremely affordable and also like really clever ideas too. So make sure you're subscribed for all that stuff coming at ya. Yes. Becky, what do you want for Christmas? Well, Kelsey, I would really like something along the lines of 400,000 subscribers. <laughs> along the lines of, you know, it's around there. Take some celebrities, <laughs> but it's pretty much 400,000 subscribers. Yeah, we have a goal that hopefully by the end of the year, if not Christmas, we can reach 400,000 subscribers. We're so close, mm -hmm. but uh, we definitely need that little so make sure you share this video and share our channel and just share the love and hopefully you guys have an awesome holiday season. Mm -hmm. um, but we will see you in our many future Christmas videos because there's lots to come. And if you like it, like it. And if you love it, sub it. Yeah.